enjoyable uh, weekend, particularly uh, on Mother's Day. Uh, I want to begin this day, this week, uh, by updating you on a number of uh, new efforts, the state of California and our western state pack of governors is advancing. I'll, I'll lay out some updates on the amount of uh, well, PPE we've been able to distribute in the last uh, few weeks, which is foundational in terms of our efforts to begin to immediately modify our stay-at-home order and begin to reopen our economy. Update you on uh, the daily numbers and, uh, and trend lines and uh, preview a few things coming up later this week. But let me first begin by making a statement reinforcing some of the words I've been saying over the course of the last few weeks. You know, it was just a number of months ago that California uh, was announcing uh, a projected uh, $6 billion budget surplus. I'll remind you, this time last year, that surplus was projected to be over $21.4 billion. We were debating uh, the size of the surplus and how best uh, to manage our budget uh, with that surplus in mind. Uh, but just 90 or so days ago, uh, a projected $6 billion budget surplus. Uh, we reflected on the fact that this state over the last five years has enjoyed 3.8 percent annual GDP growth, substantially outperforming the rest of the nation. In so many ways, in the last uh, five or six years, we've really become the tentpole of the American economy in terms of job creation, uh, in terms of economic output, not only reflected in those GDP numbers, but the consecutive months of net job growth. We had record low unemployment, record reserves in the state of California, paid off that wall of debt, which become so infamous in the state uh, of California, and saw our bond rating, independent uh, of any assertions by an elected official, our bond rating agencies upgraded the state uh, on two occasions in the last uh, year. Uh, I say all that, and as I said all of that on multiple occasions, to just reinforce uh, the current status, uh, and that is those numbers are completely flipped. We now are struggling uh, with tens of billions of dollars uh, in budget deficits directly uh, as an impact directly caused because of the impact of this disease, uh, COVID-19. Uh, unemployment has skyrocketed in this state, some $13.1 billion uh, of unemployment claims we have distributed, uh, $13.1 billion in cash has been distributed uh, to people struggling uh, and suffering because of the economic consequences. 4.5 million uh, Californians that have filed for unemployment insurance uh, and PUA, pandemic uh, unemployment assistance, uh, just since March 12th. 4.5 million just since March 12th. $13.1 billion distributed, 3.4 billion just last week. It gives you the magnitude of what's happened in just a short period of time, 90 or so days in this state. Unemployment numbers uh, that when new numbers come in will be north of 20%, uh, getting closer to 22, 3, 4, 5%, uh, very, very likely. And so the challenge is enormous. And this challenge is one that's not only presented to us here in the state of California, uh, but it's a challenge uh, that will be uh, felt all across uh, the United States and, for that matter, around the rest of the world. You're seeing numbers come in in states large and small of uh, the impact to the general funds of their budgets. Uh, states like California that were running some surpluses now running uh, historic. Uh, deficits and challenges related uh, to unemployment claims, the likes of which they haven't seen since the Great uh, Depression. Uh, these are challenging times, and they require uh, a collaborative spirit. They require a, a level of cooperation uh, that led to conversation with our Western governors and our Western PAC, uh, where we uh, decided it would be best if we go together and uh, advance uh, our needs uh, and put to light and put into writing uh, our hope and expectation of support from the federal government. Uh, and today we are putting out jointly uh, governors of Oregon, Washington, Nevada, and Colorado and their respective leadership in their uh, assembly uh, and in their state senate. Some are House of Representatives, depending on the state. Uh, but the signature of the speaker, the leader pro tem uh, of the Senate, 
not just the assembly, in each of those states and the governor. Uh, and our speaker, Anthony Rendon, our pro tem, uh, and Tony Atkins, and the minority leader of the assembly, Republican Marie Waldron, signed similar uh, uh, letter. Uh, to the federal government, to Nancy Pelosi, to Mitch McConnell, uh, and others, uh, requesting aid in a $1 trillion range. That's the range of support we feel we need as a nation, states, uh, municipals, uh, as well uh, as counties. Uh, this is the, the requirement of this moment. These are the, it gives you a sense of the thrust of, of the, the needs that we are all feeling uh, as states, as regions, as city that are required uh, to get through this pandemic and to make sure that we're doing justice to you, to your public health, to your public safety, uh, to our education system. Because remember, uh, these budgetary shortfalls are so much bigger than any state, any city, any county, uh, but they directly impact public safety, our firefighters, our police officers, our first responders. They directly impact public education and our teachers. They directly impact public health and our ability for counties to support their public health systems. It's not just states asking for bailout, quite the contrary. It's requesting that we support those that we need the most at this time, our public safety officials, our public health uh, officials, uh, and make sure that we do justice to our public education system. So I'm very pleased with this pact. Uh, I'm very pleased with the letter. And I couldn't be more proud and honored uh, by the signatures uh, of all of those, not only uh, our three leaders in this state, uh, but substantively uh, those leaders across uh, the United States in this pact uh, that represent legislative leaders, not just the executives uh, themselves. So I wanted to begin with that and uh, also uh, extend uh, appreciation uh, for the ongoing collaborative, this best practice sharing uh, that continues within these regional PACs. Uh, it continues to, I think, impress not only me, uh, but enliven all of us, the ability for our chiefs of staffs and uh, our uh, Office of Emergency Personnel uh, to continue to share best practices in real time. And just based on a lot of those conversations, this is one of the, uh, one of the efforts that we are now making public here today.